Last term we saw that there's always an equilibrium between aldehydes and ketones and the enol form. So let, let's draw the enol form here. What would the enol form of this ketone be? Not the enolate, but the enol. Wouldn't we have to pronate first then? Ah, so let's not worry about the mechanism first for a second. Let's just draw what the uh, so let's just draw what would happen if there was a tautomerization reaction. What would the enol form look like? That's right. Here's the enol form. Okay, and we saw that this is called tautomerization. This reaction, when we go back and forth between an aldehyde or a ketone and an enol, is called tautomerization. Now, which of these is usually favored? The ketone or the enol? Ketone. So really, it would be better to draw this smaller. like this. In fact, last term we saw that if you produce an enol, you should expect the main product actually to be the aldehyde or the ketone, because it's going to tautomerize. However, it's important to keep in mind that in reality, you're always going to have a mixture of both of these, a small proportion of this and a larger proportion of this. So there's going to be many problems where you see an enol, and you have to remember that it's going to be keep flipping back into the aldehyde or ketone form. But also, sometimes it's important to look at an aldehyde or a ketone and remember that occasionally it's flipping into the enol form. We have to keep in mind that they're flipping back and forth between these two forms. This can be either acid or base catalyzed, and it's important to know the mechanism for this reaction. This is pretty sure to come up. What's the mechanism for tautomerization, either acid or base catalyzed? Um, well, what's the basic difference between these here? Um, the, base, the main big difference here is the oxygen here is gaining a proton. And where's that proton coming from? From the carbon, alpha carbon. It's coming from the alpha carbon. After all, this alpha carbon has three hydrogens, doesn't it? Whereas this alpha carbon now only has two hydrogens in order to form the double bond. Because they're hidden hydrogens, it's easy to miss this. So what's really happening here, tautomerization is just about moving this proton. Tautomerization is just about moving a proton from the alpha carbon to the carbonyl carbon, or, back, or, or vice versa. Um, unfortunately, though, we can't just do that in one step. The simplest thing would be to kind of just do it like this. Uh, but that's not an acceptable mechanism because this is too far away for the oxygen to reach over and grab this. So we need to use a catalyst to do this in two steps. So there's two things we're going to have to do. We have to take the proton from the alpha carbon, and we have to give the proton to this oxygen. Or if we were going in the opposite direction, we would have to take the proton from this oxygen and give a proton to this alpha carbon. And the only question is, which of those is going to happen first, and which is going to happen second? Are we going to give a proton first, or are we going to take a proton first? Well, let's say that we're using an acid catalyst. We're going to take a proton first. If we're using an acid catalyst, um, is this molecule going to start by taking or giving a proton? Yeah. By taking a proton. That's right. Uh, see, I don't think so. So I got the three O's over here. What about, isn't it S? You are right. I am missing it. That's right. Four of us. And then it steals. Right. So who's going to take that proton? The oxygen. Okay, so let's show that mechanism. So we've done the step where the molecule takes a proton. So what's the next step? Giving a proton. Yeah, and who's it going to give the proton to? The carbonyl carbon. No, wouldn't it be the alpha carbon? So now we need to get rid of this proton, right? Yeah. So that isn't the SO4, SO4 minus going to steal a hydrogen? That's right. So that, that was the answer to my question. I was asking, who are we going to give the proton to? We're going to give it to the conjugate of the acid from the first step, because this is just a catalyst, so we need to regenerate it. Whichever catalyst we used up in the first step, we need to regenerate now in this step. Okay. 
Good. This is really a very simple mechanism. We have an acid. So basically, the catalyst is either going to give a proton and then take a proton, or it's going to take a proton and then give a proton. So well, was, this would, and, sorry? So if it was in a base, then it would give a proton. That thing would give a proton first. Before. Yeah, I think you're thinking about that right. So this acid here wants to give a proton to this molecule, so this molecule wants to take the proton. And then in the second step, we kind of reverse that. Uh, and that takes us to this step over here. Good. Um, and we should be able to, um, there also would be an acid catalyzed mechanism that would turn this into this. Again, you would give the proton to the alpha carbon and then take the proton from here. Okay, well, let's quickly go through the mechanism then if we use a base catalyst. And again, there's simply going to be a giving a proton step and a taking a proton step where we regenerate the catalyst. Now we just need to regenerate the catalyst, get the hydroxide back. That's right. So first the catalyst here took a proton, and then we're going to regenerate the catalyst by having this conjugate give the proton back. So pretty straightforward. Just one technical issue here. Remember, the reason this is a strong base is because it's an ionic bond and the oxygen has a negative charge. So we should actually put that negative charge in when we're showing uh, the mechanism. We don't have to show the lone pair here. OK, there's a pretty good chance that you'll have to do that on the test, show the mechanism for tautomerization. Now, we just showed the tautomerization reactions when we go from the aldehyde to the ketone to the enol. It would be good practice to do them in the reverse direction. You should also be able to show the mechanism when you start with the enol and you go back to the aldehyde or the ketone. Well, it's going to be either first giving or right. taking. That's right. So I think you can do that on your own, because like you said, it's again just giving a proton, then taking a proton, and regenerating the catalyst. Um, and you just have to decide what's the logical order to do that in. Okay, good. Now one thing that's important to keep in mind then again is remember you're always going to have this equilibrium then between these tautomers. Even though this re it requires a catalyst, it turns out it requires only a trace of acid or base. So um, even if you haven't specifically added any acid or base, you always expect there's some trace of acid and base. It's almost impossible, say, just to get your materials clean enough that there's not even a trace of acid or base. So even if they haven't specifically mentioned acid or base catalyst, we always assume there's going to be an equilibrium, usually with mainly the aldehyde and the ketone, but always a small amount of the enol. Okay. okay. All right, so that's one important idea. Uh, but now we can get into the main topic here, which is using the enolates as nucleophiles.